high, but he walked to episode 137 of Game My Mom Found. I am Mike Calverton, and who's drawing, releasing the de- releasing the devil with me tonight by being a mischievous child with me tonight. There we go. Michael K. Hughes, you stupid dog. <laughs> and it's Dominic Chikoki. I'm Prince Pixel himself. <laughs> nice. And before we go too far, I wanted to, we do have a monthly Patreon poll going on right now for anime pilot test. You get to choose which anime we're going to cover. How would be about Outlaw Star, Case Close, or Akuma No Riddle? And right now, Case Close is winning. <laughs> so if you want to change that for little as a dollar, you can go to our Patreon at the bottom of the, in the show notes, you'll see a link to the Patreon. And for little as a dollar, you can vote in our Patreon poll. So please do that and help us out. All right. And Mike, since this is your pick, why don't you introduce what we're talking about? This is Graffiti Kingdom for the PS2, released in North America in 2005. Is this the same year Cameo came out? I think you said that. Yes, it is. (laughs) Yes, it is. Oh, boy, is it ever. (laughs) This is a better game than that was. It does everything Cameo wanted to do and more. (laughs) (laughs) I enjoyed Cameo more, but I will say this is a good game. It just I was an idiot during this game, but that's me. What did, what did you do? So after I beat this game, I decided, okay, I'm going to watch a speed run so I can kind of see, like, you know, just get a little more information before we do this recording. And in the speed run, I realized that part of the thing with this game is that your main character can change in different form. And that's yeah. the big thing, which, but what he also can do is he, if they tell you in the beginning of the game, he can swipe and, like, take over a monster. I thought, oh, you take over that monster, you get to play as it for a little bit if, in case the card doesn't drop first. <laughs> oh, so I'm like, God. I don't need to do that. I'll just <laughs> the cards that I get. I didn't realize that that's how you get abilities you can give other monsters. So I didn't uh-huh. have abilities to give other monsters. Oh, I was like, I didn't do that either. Yeah. I didn't. Wow. <laughs> the game does not explain that to you. No, I game completely, completely explain forgot about it. it. I, yeah, I, I you, remember that being a thing and I just completely forgot about it. When you attack an enemy, it'll show their health bar on the top, right? And if it has any stars underneath its health bar, those are, that's the number of abilities you learn when you take them over. Oh, that's oh. what those stars meant. I thought the stars just meant like how hard they were. I thought it was like a rarity system. Yeah, me too. Okay, <laughs> so we both played it the wrong way. That's good. That's fine. Oh, somebody made Sephiroth in this game too, by the way. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. If you just search Graffiti Kingdom Creations, people make some crazy crap. So this is a third-person action game platformer, I think is the best way to say it. It's an RPG. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, there, there are RPGs. You do level up. You do get medals as you kill things, which are experience points. It's the what does leveling up even do? RPG. Oh, you get you learn more tutorials and stuff. Yeah, it unlocks more things to use in the character creation. It makes it makes your health bar bigger too. Yeah. Also, okay. yeah, your your stats do go up. Okay, I didn't feel like that because I was getting my ass handed to me, but that might have been just because I was using the wrong monsters to fight with. Uh, yes, it's very particular sometimes. <laughs> like this game has a very like odd story too. I felt, but it was yes, it's, it's very cartoony. Like the graphics of this game are very, very cartoony, and it feels like a Saturday morning cartoon. It's the easiest way to describe it. Like a and precursor like the, to like the Yoshi Woolly World stuff, yeah, almost. Because yeah, the whole I, the whole idea but, is that you're a kid who the parents or the king and queen can't find, and you're outside scaling the tower or the castle. Why are you on the outside of the wall? I don't know, but you're on the outside of the wall in the game. It also starts just like cameo. You're climbing up a tower. <laughs> But you're not controlling it while you're climbing up the tower, at least. Details. Details. You're just... And then you, like, go into a hidden room by accident because you press the wall and fall into a room where the devil has been locked up or something. And you unleash the devil and you get kicked back to the starting point, just like Cameo. And then you learn the (laughs) tutorials, just like Cameo. And your adventure begins to save your parents, just like Cameo. (laughs) What's in your dad dead in Cameo, though? You're still saving your royal family or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Tomato, tomato. (laughs) <laughs> mayo kamal cameo <laughs> it's so weird like I, I got into this i'm like what the hell are we playing and it was just I, you know i mean how many games can say that your starting player is a multicolored bear that looks like a stuffed animal that i kind of want now how many games can say that one maybe pokemon know. not even pokemon yeah, there's not really multicolored starters like that. No, no, or multi. There's nothing really that multicolored like that because it looks like it looks like somebody really just stitched together a bear with different pieces of of cloth that they had and made a bear. It's like the Banjo Tooie boss. Okay, need to play that game one day. It it just kind of like in, 
So the combat is very simple at first. Like you, you punch, you kick, you know, you have different moves, you, you know, different face buttons will do different things mm-hmm. on your creature. And then you just fight little monsters, to unlock doors and you get, you find out you get experience point. I just wish I would have known about the ability thing. Cause I would have made a lot yes. better creatures. Oh yeah. Yes. That's, it's a totally different game. Mm-hmm. I'll have to replay it again, doing all that stuff. I almost restarted it after I beat it, and I saw that, and I watched the speed run, and I watched what the guy did to beat the game, and I'm like, wow, did I play this game wrong. <laughs> so but we got through it, and I will say, I think this is a great B game. But... So why don't you talk about some of the issues you had, Dominic, trying to get this game to run? <laughs> to uh, so it, Mike. I, got, I got a PS2 copy. I ordered it when Mike when you, Mike Alberton, uh, invited me to the recording and I was playing it on my PS2 that I have. And then one night it just, my PS2 just stopped breeding the discs. So I had to go out and get another PS2 just to finish the game. Jeez. (laughs) My first time dealing with a PS2 fat. Oh, I always had slims. Hmm. I think it was worth it. And then I had issues with this game too. Well, both me and Mike were playing, playing emulation. No, I just played my original copy. Oh, you have your original copy? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, you, yeah, because you told me about emulation, like I had to switch one of the cores around to get it to run, and then that still wouldn't run it on my end, and then I had to go in there and, like, change settings and watch a YouTube video, and I, I didn't think I was going to be able to play this game, and then I, I even messaged you guys at all. I might not. I might be just watching videos, and then I got it to run finally. Yeah, I think you messaged me, and then you got it to run, like, right away after that. Yeah, because I, I, went, I went to bed, couldn't sleep, Came back downstairs when I should have been sleeping and started looking up YouTube videos and figured out what to do and then fixed it because it was bugging me. I don't like not playing game for the show. It's only happened once where I really couldn't play a game, but this would have been the first instance where I couldn't even like boot it up. And I didn't like that idea. That's fair. So I, I forced myself to figure it out. Not to mention the fact that I looked on eBay to buy this and it was for right now on eBay is like $70. <laughs> I, I probably paid that much to get a copy. Ooh, is that right? Like yeah, it's decently rare now. I mean, like, I don't, I'm a collector, so, like, I don't mind it, you know, if I have the ability to do it, I don't mind shelling out, but, like, I like playing an original hardware. I like just having that, like, original experience when I can. Makes sense. Part of my issue with that is I had two PS2s, and the last time that I booted up those two PS2s, they were, or the last time I used them, or before the last time I used them, I should say, <laughs> My son, who was like three at the time, grabbed them and pulled them off the shelf, and they both fell face down. I have never tried to load them up again. <laughs> probably should try at least once, just to be yeah. sure. Well, actually, the funny thing is, a couple days ago, I actually got a new PS2 from a friend of mine who was moving to California. He's like, hey, I don't need this. Do you want this? I'm like, sure, I'll hook it up. So I have a PS2 now. Nice. <laughs> so we all went through issues for this thing. Yeah, yeah you. I was going to say, I just really, like, I have some things to say. If you want to just give your thing, you go ahead. The character creation, I, I, I'm not a big character creation guy in any game, so that right. made it harder. Like, I actually was on Nerds Without Pants once, and the episode that I came on was all about character creation, and I didn't have much to share. <laughs> it's just not me. The only game where I really have created somebody was Dragon Age Origins, and I just really picked a very basic mage and called her Elaine from Wheel of Time, and I went with that. I just, it's not my thing, unfortunately. I mean, this game has a great character creation where you, click on things and draw shapes and then color the shapes and you can do so much with it. I mean, it's not the simplest thing. I mean, it's simple. It's not the easiest thing just because of you're using a, you're not using a mouse, you're using a, you're controller. Using a PS2 controller. Yeah. yeah but the but it's 3d I'm, modeling in a PS2 yes. game. It's like, you know, the, the magic of dreams and all of that stuff. It's kind of like that promise in a way. I would love to play this game in like PSVR dream style. <laughs> That'd be a great dreams project for someone to work on. Just graffiti kingdom. <laughs> so Mike, what is your memories of this game? Like what made you pick this for the show? This is one of those games that I just wound up in my collection somehow. I don't remember buying it or anything. It was just there, but I knew I liked playing it. So I was like, Oh, I'm make someone else play this, even though you're probably going to hate it. <laughs> I, I didn't hate it. I, at first I wasn't into it because I was well, one. I didn't play it right. But once I got like the hang of it, I did enjoy it. It was it is a it is a good platformer, I think. And it's enough. It's varied enough, especially if you're into character creation and you're and someone tells you that you have to go and absorb other people's abilities. And that's how the game works. <laughs> you would I think it's a very good game. Very strange, but good. game. Yeah. So my, my thing with this is that I think the the translation is not great. I think the voice acting is pretty bad. 
but somehow the game and the story still was really charming to me. Yeah, it so the whole idea that you're just like you were like like Cammy, you said, just trying to save your parents or save your yeah, and you're just going to these different like colorful worlds because the demon took over your castle and everything looks like made out of cardboard, kind of like kind of yeah. has that aesthetic to it. But I just I just love the prince's attitude. He's very Gen X, very like nonchalant and does not care about anything. And it's just like <laughs> like the scene where he just has to he just like stops just to pee. It's just like what other game is going to do that for you? Like it's it's very much a comedy game that I feel like maybe sometimes the translation helps it a little bit, but also sometimes holds it back because it just gets too weird. And you're just like, what is going on here? Also, one of my issues with this game is there is no walkthrough to it online, really. Well, that's not an issue of the game. It's just an issue. issue no, it's an issue for me with the game, not <laughs> the game itself. No, I don't want to say that. But like that was an issue for me because I like walkthroughs. I like even just having a walkthrough to know, like, OK, I have this amount of parts to do. So I need to do this part on Monday, this part on Wednesday so I can get beat the game. No, there's little things. I mean, that's a me problem, not a game right. problem. That's a me problem. And there wasn't one for this game. And that made me upset. <laughs> But I, I don't blame the game for that. And also, there are no there are almost no videos of this game on YouTube. Like, I mean, there are, but not like there's no like, hey, this is what you should do to you know play the game. Like there are for like I looked those up a lot for games, especially ones that I'm unfamiliar with. There was none of that. There was no like there was this very there was even only two reviews of, of on YouTube of this game. And one, just the guy shitting on it like an idiot. I mean, when I mean, the reason I say that, like, there's nothing wrong with not liking a game. And he's like, it takes 400 hits to kill an enemy. And he hits it twice and kills it in the video that he shows. I'm like, come on now. Like, there are enemies <laughs> that take a lot of hits. But if you're going to do that, you need to at least show. You can't just show a guy you kill one hit and then put it mm-hmm. in the video. So, you know, that that was it. There were just those two videos. And that is all there is for overview videos for this game, which is not common for YouTube. So we're going to be one of the few people who covered it on a, on a podcast. So I think that's interesting. Too. Yeah. <laughs> I really like the cardboard aesthetic. It, it, at first, I didn't. I wasn't so. I wasn't so sure, but it didn't take on for it. It actually really grew on me as as I played this yeah. game. Yeah, it helps the game age a lot better too, because you go back to a lot of PS2 games that try to be realistic and they just look like ass. But this one still kind of holds up. The bouncer still looks good. No, it doesn't. If I can bring up one game, <laughs> well, another game that I was on an episode for, Mega Man Legends. I feel like is a, is a little bit comparable here in the terms yeah. of. Mm-hmm. Very colorful, very stylized, very Saturday morning cartoon, but probably with a better dub for Mega Man Legends. Uh, Mega Man, look what we found! Yeah, roll. Oh, I love that game. <laughs> Canadian so, Mega Man. Another another thing about this game that I that I because I only found this out by I, when I first started watching this and I didn't think I was going to be able to play it. I was watching or watching a YouTube video, and I was seeing the guy collect cards, and that's when I learned what the cards do. How when you collect yes. cards, it lets you pick different creatures to play as. So every enemy that you fight, you can beat them enough times they'll drop their card. You can turn and you can turn into that creature. I thought that's how you get abilities. It's not, but so I was collecting all the cards that I could get whenever a card would drop. And I would sit there and farm enemies to get their cards because Same. I thought that's what I should be doing. When I yes. find out now, I should just been absorbing the enemies and moving on. It's I thought it was just like Pokemon. You got to collect the cards mm-hmm. and you just use them and then you move on. That is not the case. <laughs> oh. uh, so I, I had the wrong things at times. Like I never got the ability to fly. Like I know you can get later in this game. You can like fly sort of, I think, or something, right? Yeah, it's yeah. in the last the last area. OK. I know you can, like, I got high jump, but I could never give high jump to a character. And I was like, why can't I edit their attacks with high jump? Because I never absorbed the ability. I just had enemies that had high jump that I would use. Okay. Yeah, I <laughs> I, I, I somehow unlocked Pengel by the end of the game. So, and Pengel just can just float in the air like Kirby. <laughs> and so you, I'm just, like, going across maps, going from, like, top to bottom in that one that book tower staircase thing. No problem. It was wonderful. Man, I wish I would have seen that. Like tops of spires, like finding secret areas and stuff. It was great. I loved it. Definitely try to find Pengal. <laughs> that was the other issue. The fact that there's like so little guides, like there's just nothing to really like. I wanted to look up stuff because that's yeah. just how I play games. And I couldn't do that. I could watch a guy play this game on YouTube for five, six hours, but I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I wanted to, you know, to read stuff to look for my particular information that I want. <laughs> and well, you know me. what? You've, you've gone this far doing all this for other people. Maybe this is your time to do it yourself <laughs> or somebody. Make yeah, the, the definitive this is the podcast. King guide. <laughs> this is not going to be the game that I settle on to make a review for or make a walkthrough for. Uh, but I should. In theory, yes. This is, this is my help to the world as I give a podcast episode that tells people what not to do in this game. 
I, you know, there's this, the, the, the whole enemy variation though is so much too. Like, it's so cool. You fight so many different enemies in this game all over the place. Like, everything is just weird and fun and it fits. Like, it's not, you know, where the devil, in a game where the devil, or a story, I should say, where the devil takes over, you would not expect the devil to make everything to be cardboard, nor would you expect the devil to be purple. <laughs> purple and yellow with a mustache. It's got it's a kind mustache. Of, it's evil. It's kind of Katamari like in a way. It's very interesting. I yes. mean, it was just this very like an interesting concept I felt that this game did. And one thing that did annoy me, but again, I respect it as a game, is a lot of enemies had iframes, which would annoy me because I'd hit them. And since I was using the wrong characters and I wasn't using stronger ability, I was using the colorful bear for a good chunk of the game. Then I switched to some kind of raven-like creature. So I was always hitting people. I wasn't using elemental attacks. I would take forever to knock out a boss or knock out an enemy in general. Yeah, that was not the way you're supposed to do this, by the way. <laughs> yeah, like every three or four hits, it knocks them into the iframe state anyway. It's just if you have elemental stuff, it'll do extra stuff during that time. Like if you hit them with fire to the point where they get iframes, they'll take damage over time for a few seconds afterwards. Or when you how about when you get lit on fire and you run <laughs> with your butt yeah. on fire? I run into the lava, that. run off a ledge. Uh-huh. I appreciate that they just didn't one hit kill you in lava. That was nice. Yeah, nothing really one hit kills you. Even when you even when you fall, you don't one hit kill. You still come back. You just lose some health, uh-huh. which was cool. Yeah, I'm glad. I agree with Dominic. I'm glad the game didn't do that because that would have made this game more annoying and harder. Also, the game is very structured. It tells you what you're going to do, and then you do it, and then you're done. And also, even tells you how many bosses you're basically going to fight because they have like the silhouettes and the save file, even, <laughs> which is cool. It does a good job of like you have when you start off, you have one world that you go in. I think you get a. You, oh, you get a key from that world, right? The first world Some, you're in? I think yeah. so, something like that. And you beat two bosses, and then you get into an op- a little open world that has that door and then two other doors. And you know each of those will give you a key, then there's a final door that leads to your final area. And I, I like that structure, so at least you know how long your game is yes. going to be when there's no guide online to look up to cheat. So that, that was nice. To make another comparison, it reminded me of Wario World. Because <laughs> Wario World has kind of a similar kind of hub world structure. Are you talking about the one for GameCube? Yes. I've never played that. Like, it's not exactly one to one, but it's like you're in like a little space and then there's a bunch of doors and then you kind of have to go back. And then like it's kind of like a like a little like circle, basically, kind of like a great graffiti kingdom has. And that's kind of your starting point. It's 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 yeah, it's interesting how that was like a very much a mid 2000s aesthetic. Okay, it's also amusing to me. So you fight a lot of bosses in this game. I mean, like there's I think there's over 12, maybe or maybe I'm over Two per world at least. Okay, so like eight. There's a decent amount, but it's funny as you beat bosses, you will see them turn into like a little like ghost, and then they will go to some bedroom where one of the characters is talking to you throughout this game that is like the daughter or the the daughter and the son of the devil. Yeah, and they're, <laughs> they're they become little ghosts and they're trying to get them to like resurrect them. It's just it's amusing. It amused me every time for some reason. It's like Pac Man. Oh yeah, the okay, the, the cartoon. Yeah, I yeah. thought they were gonna they were gonna follow through on that, and that like you were actually going to have to fight them resurrected. Oh God, I'm so glad I didn't do a Mega Man thing. All right, now time for all the refights. But like they they kind of like hint that that might be a thing, but it's they don't do it. I'm, mm-hmm. It's kind of maybe they, if they had more time, they would have done it. But it's like made by Capcom, they would have done it. That's for sure. The last couple of worlds are pretty short, so I wonder if that was supposed to be in there and they just took it out. Maybe that that one thing where you going across planets was like pretty lengthy though. Yeah. Yeah. Also, those stars were not gold for me. <laughs> like the stars that you jump on that were gold for you, I think. Yeah. They're black in mine because I was playing emulation. I found <laughs> out for some reason the emulation copy turns them black. Eh, yeah. I don't know why. Not was, perfect. No, it's fine. I mean, it was a it's a minor. Like I wouldn't even have known except for a, a speedrunner was telling me. Yeah, they're they're not supposed to be black. <laughs> you can still see them. Yes. I thought it was fine. Yeah. I thought it's that was part like, of the aesthetic. Not like Cube of War. No. Oh. Yeah, no, so, I, didn't have, I didn't have those issues like you before. So should we talk about the romance? <laughs> between you and the dog? Yeah, between no. Pixel and Palette or Pixel, Pixel and, and Palette? Pixel and Palette. Pixel and Tablet, yes. <laughs> those are like brother and sister, right? Tablet no, and Pixel's and the main Tablet character. And Palette are the brother and sister. Yeah. Okay. Also very hard names to keep separate. Pastel, Tablet, Palette, and Pixel. Uh-huh. But, uh, I didn't pay any attention to the story. <laughs> they really, really go for like pixel and tablet being a couple. <laughs> it's so weird. Like 
it's it's kind of homophobic for how it handles it, but like they also <laughs> yeah, still try to make it happen. Tablet, it's like, uh, I think I'm starting to like you, and Pixel's like, don't be so disgusting. <laughs> Okay, I didn't listen to any cutscene. I mean, I watched them because I was forced to, because you can't skip them unless you beat the game first. Mm -hmm. But I just didn't care. I was listening to podcasts during this game. This is one of those games where I was just like, I get to hit things. Okay, that's what I want to do. I want to hit things. So I I missed out on something. You said there's like a tickle. There's like a tickle scene or something. I missed out on that. Yeah. How could you miss that? (laughs) I don't know. I think it. I don't. I think I just wasn't paying attention. It's your introduction to like the last world where you have to fight that like flower lady. Yeah, Acrylla. Yeah. I and the like lady. The, I fought the flower thing. Yeah, she, she her name's Acrylla. She like talks to you a couple times, and like the, it, like it introduces like like tablet goes to her, and they're 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 discussing like stuff, villain stuff, and you know because tablet's technically above Acrylla, but not above his sister Pala. He's like the outcast. Obviously, he's like, oh, I guess I'll have to punish you now. And then like a tickle scene happens. Yep. And then of oh. course Pixel walks up. And- <laughs> Tablet's like, oh, this isn't what it looks like. She was being punished. Wait, maybe that's not the right choice of words. Damn, I, I kind of wish I would have seen this now. I might have to look this up. This looks, this sounds amusing. But then it, it, it's it's interesting given the context of also pushing for a Tablet and Pixel to be together in a way. It's such a strange game. It, it's the closest they come to a complication, the uh, the love triangle. So, like, you have a, a dog that joins you right in the beginning of the game that because you release the devil by accident because you create a ball and then the ball releases the devil or something like that. Right. Yeah, that's the uh, story. More or less. OK. Like but the, the dog the devil hit... seal was getting weak. OK. And then you, this pixel just kind of accidentally finished the job. OK. But the dog isn't a dog. It's actually a princess. Right. Or something. It's a, it's girl. a girl. Like she's a girl. Like yeah. she's a human girl. She's not a dog. She's a girl. <laughs> yeah. Because she turned. He, he doesn't really know that, though, I don't think. Right. Until like very near the end, he finds out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For some reason, she turns into a girl because she gets disabled. And then you think that's going to be a thing. And then like, no, never mind. She's fine. And then later they just take her away when they really could have just streamlined that into one scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where Acrylla shoots her with a beam to disable her ability to turn into a graffiti creature. She starts to turn human and then doesn't. It even pixels like, well, that was <laughs> disappointing. <laughs> even Acrylla's like, yeah, I'm with you on this one. <laughs> A strange game. Like, I'm very down with Pixel being very like savvy about certain things and like just like wait why like does this mean I have to fight you? And then like falling asleep when that butler guy is talking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like he's just like he's very much like a shithead in a good way. There were some cool parts with him. Also, I didn't I didn't take advantage of this because I played this game wrong, but there are so many like uses of elemental powers in here to hit switches that will give you different platforms or just to help you with enemies. Yes. Except when you don't know that you can absorb enemies' abilities because the game didn't tell me that it makes it a problem. <laughs> I yeah, might like, actually replay this because now I'm really curious to see how this game would go if I played it correctly. Mm-hmm. Like you can hit water with uh, ice attacks and then like little ice platforms over top of it. I did that once with um. So as I post this on Facebook, and I will be posting it in the Facebook group by the time before people hear this episode, how many games can I say let me play as a frog wearing a diaper? Only yeah, diaper one that frog. I know. Nope. Only one that I know of. That that was when I went, okay, this game is interesting now. <laughs> like, when, <laughs> like, this is as weird as hell. He's not as cool as Reject Cal, but he's up there. I never saw Reject Cal. I Until I watched a YouTube video, I saw Reject Cal. I, don't, I just must not been paying attention when I fought him. Because he's uh, in there early a lot game. of games. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of like things to this game. I mean, there's switches you that you can like jump on that will like spring you up or speed you up in different directions. I mean, you can completely if you are absorbing abilities like you're supposed to, you can completely just change characters too and make give them like so, okay. So I watched a speedrun of this, and what the guy did is the first thing he does he creates a little body and two gigantic legs, and that's what he plays as so he can run faster, and <laughs> and that's the fastest way to get around the game. And then he'll get the high jump ability so he can high jump. And then he got the ability to dash later on in the game. And he just like dashes everywhere. I'm like, wow, he played this. And then so during boss fight, he would switch to that form, run around until they were ready to hit him and then switch to a different form and hit him. And that's how you play this game. Not that's cool. It's a lot better than running around the colorful bear and punching people and taking slivers of their health off and then save stating and then redoing that and then loading if you get hit. It's a lot better than that. Let's just say. (laughs) I mean, I had fun trying to figure out which monsters work for which levels and like how to like 
get elemental enemies to to do what I needed to do and like get a train so I can run fast. Oh, I did that. I did get the I didn't get the train, but I got the other the little two little propeller guys that are joined together that run. Oh, I didn't get those. I kept trying, but I only got the train. Well, I, I did what I did in every RPG in this game, and I just farmed enemies for a while at certain points and was leveled up and they would talk on the phone or put a podcast on and just sit there and just grind. Because when you give me a leveling system and you give me something like this, that's what Mike will do. That's totally fair. I'm very curious what the level cap is. 50. Oh, is it 50? Mm-hmm. Oh, I could just go back and finish that then. I'm like level 40 something. I was 40. I didn't get to 50 because I, I got to, as many things happened to me in games. I got to a point where I just I'm like, OK, I'm done leveling. I'm done concern i'm just rushing to the end i stopped fighting things <laughs> the final area i didn't fight anything i just rushed that's fair yeah i did that too but only because i finished it this morning <laughs> but you beat in this game before though oh yeah i mean there was one section where you had to fight i didn't i i, I thought about farming these enemies you fight oh, like a they're called like the king queen or the rook king they're like they have pawn they have chess names and you fight a mm-hmm. bunch of these enemies and I kind of wanted some of them because they, they look good, like good enemies to use. But mm-hmm. I just couldn't. I didn't bother. Oh, them. the axe bishop. Or yes, the fire those bishop. bishop. Yes, those that guys. Dude, I, I, I use that dude a lot. I actually ended up using him, too. I had it to where I had a, a fire guy on one button, an ice guy and a lightning person. And swap between them, give him different movement abilities to kind of round them out. So he was my fire guy. That's what you're supposed to do, too, is have stuff of different elements. Like, I know the speed run that I watch, what he did, he takes the colorful bear, and he gives them an ice punch, a, a thunder punch, and a, and a fire punch or something. Like he gives them all the abilities, so that way he can just use one character for when he has to do elemental switches. Mm. And you, I mean, it's just it's so interesting how varied this game can be. Like, yeah. I mean, all three of our experiences were different, and, like, this game could be completely different, especially if you're making your own creatures. And the fact that I, th- I think every creature you fight was something that was made with that same character creation tool. Probably yeah, I think so, too. Like uh, with the controller. Saints Row. The original Saints Row did that, too, where they used the character creation tool to make all the NPCs. I do like when games do that, because then you can do you have the same tools that they have, which is cool. I don't like character creation in games, as I said, so that made this harder for me. But I'm happy to know that it's there for people who yes. can take advantage of it. I tried to make a character about every world or so just to see what was new when I unlocked. The one I sent you is definitely my best work. <laughs> Giant, ugly beetle looking thing. I tried to go for like a heart man type of thing. It looked funny. Yes. It looked uh, better than any of my creations. Okay. My creations were just big blobs. I had that. I had like a crab kind of dude. And then I had like a weird like Dreamcast logo y type of thing. <laughs> Mike, did you make anything odd? Uh, Not this time. I usually make like a little beetle thing where it's just got a half moon body with a bunch of tiny legs just because I, I think the the different running animations are hilarious yes so as I, as I was watching a speed run of this i found out that the most powerful creature that this guy made was a giant ball just a big giant ball that he gave an electric attack and it would crush things and that was that was how he beat the game excellent and i was like man i need to replay this game the right way there's Definitely some kind of like hidden stats depending on the size of and proportions of like the body parts. Cause like you can make a giant arm and attack with it, and it you would think it would do a lot of damage, but it doesn't always. But sometimes it, it's sometimes when you make it just right, it does a lot more damage. Yes. Yeah. There are certain principles like that the speedrunner was talking about. Again, this game doesn't explain anything, but there are, you are right. There are principles like that that will affect certain things. Because I was watching him and he was doing so much damage compared to what I was doing when I played this game. Because I got so, the Raven, the Raven, the whole Raven Devil or something. That's what I used mm-hmm. to make the game with. And you get Here's him. He's my ice guy. He's good. I really liked him, even though I shouldn't have used him probably later on because he <laughs> wasn't. Yeah, he wasn't good. He was not good for that for, for a lot of stuff. But he just I got his card and I liked the way he looked. So he became my guy. I do want to just highlight again that this is a game where you're not only creating characters, but you're like figuring out their how they walk, how they move, how they sound, how their attacks are. It's really in depth and cool. Oh, you, you can change, change anything. Like you yeah. can you can go into the creator and tell the game that its arms are now legs and its legs are arms and it'll walk all jacked up and attack all weird and it's hilarious. And you can you can also alter the things you, the cards you get, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you don't alter any of the monsters you get. That's amazing. It's so like uh, I'll take uh, 
the one of the fire punch guys or the ice punch guys you fight in the mountain here or there, and I'll make one side fire and one side ice just to have both at, on one character. But I'll go in and change one one fist to blue, one fist to red. Got to keep the aesthetic going. So like I I really did it wrong then in trying to find elemental creatures when you can just make your creatures elemental. Yeah, but you have to steal abilities. Yes, that we weren't doing. Yes, <laughs> so we wouldn't have gotten that. At the end of the game, I think I ended it with the Axe Bishop, Pengel, and Fake Pixel, which I love having Fake Pixel. <laughs> I got Fake Pixel. I didn't use them, though. I, I think it's funny that the story, like, in, like not the story, but, like, in the gameplay, you meet up with Fake Pixel at a certain point. Like, you fight him, and then the game introduces him in the story. And then it's, <laughs> it's just one scene. I love that scene. It's, like, trying to tell... Pastel's trying to figure out which one's the real Pixel, and the real one goes... God, don't you know which one's which, you stupid dog? And she's just like, him. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Because he's an asshole. Yes. And that, that is after the scene where he just goes to pee because they have a convenient little sign that says no pixel. And of course, that's where he goes. <sighs> and also, how many games can say it? You get to play in a bowling alley. Oh, my God. That was so that, cool. So that's like the third. It's, a, it's the last area that you do before you go to the final area. And that kind of like wowed me a little bit. because I'm like, OK, I was not expecting to be in a bowling alley. And I was very amused when we got there. It's very chibi robo. Yes. You know, like in this big world. Yeah. I, I need to play that one day. Someday. Didn't, didn't you have that as an episode? No, not yet. Oh, almost did. But I'll talk it never happened yet. Someday. Oh, OK, gotcha, gotcha. It was on the plan to happen at one point, but then didn't happen. But so the, the bowling alley was just so cool. Like at first I couldn't I was having an issue because you have to get to one of the doors. You have to hit a switch and you have to run to the switch. And my guy wasn't fast. My bear wasn't fast enough. Right. And that's when I learned like, oh, I so I went and got a card for one of the train, use the train enemy to dash. Right. And, well, all you have to do is just, you know, suck out the dash ability and then use it that way. But I didn't know that. So or yes. jump, jump around the barricades because it's empty on one side. Oh, I didn't mean? know that either. What do you mean? Like when you're going up that big tower and the doors are closing, uh, you can just jump around those or not the doors like the walls kind of extend out to block your path. Yeah, I did that. I'm talking about earlier when you're in the bowling alley part. Looking, oh, oh, oh the, you have like to dash. The, and then that, that this is when I start like at first for the longest time because RPG, I kill everything I saw. This is the point where I was starting to get kind of like, OK, I need to play this game. And I stopped killing things because I didn't need the experience. Mm-hmm. I felt, yeah, that that always happens with me in games. Right, just get to that point where I'm just like, okay, time to just keep going. I also killed everything I saw pretty much. So, oh, there's a pinball section too. Yeah, there was. That was now that, that was, was cool. That I'm not a big pinball guy, but getting to be in a platform where you're in a giant pinball world with flippers and you have to like, I didn't know what to do at first, and I couldn't look up a video. I, I randomly just got the somehow I got the balls to follow me, and I and I knew I had to get these balls to go into these different holes that were colored, but I don't right. know how the, why the ball spawned or what made it happen. So how many how many holes were there? There's like four. I, I just did it on the first one, and I just kept going. The first yeah. one, it's from when I watched in the speed run, it can be any, it doesn't matter which one you do. Oh, okay. He did the first one he saw. I did a different one that I saw and both work just fine. So I don't think it matters. As long as you get one, you will, you get a door. Which again, that seems like a, an opportunity that could have used more time to develop further of like different areas or something. Yeah. It's why, why have four holes? It was interesting though. And the fact that the balls can get hit by the flippers too. And they're like, they, they yes. chase after you the balls home after you. <laughs> I do love that. Yes. It again, this, it's just such a strange aesthetic. It's not a, it's not, what I was expecting when I came into this game. I was not expecting any of what I got. It's a great B game. It's like it's like an ill bleed. It's like a blue stinger. It's like a overblood. I have never played those games yet. You played overblood. Oh, I played that, unfortunately. I, I guess I just try to forget that memory that happened. You're missing out. Overblood's great. Oh, I beat it. I recorded an episode about it. Too. Our one year anniversary. Overblood is not great. <laughs> <laughs> overblood is terrible, but uh, ill bleed and blue stinger I've never played yet. Great games. Wonderful games. They're Dreamcast, right? Yes. That's why I never played them. I mean, with B games, there there's always going to be issues with them. They're going to be hard to control. or The story's going to be whack or, you know, something's going to be wrong with it. But the charm of it all is just always what drives it. This game did have a lot of charm. Mm-hmm. And it was more charm than I expected. Like, I, I understood immediately why Mike liked this game when I thought when I saw the character creation. I'm like, yes. oh, yep, I understand. <laughs> so I, I fought Earlier on in the game, I was like, I was fighting everything because I was just I was trying to farm all the cards because that's what I do. 
when I'm in an RPG, I will start just murdering things and trying to level up because I like games when they're easy. So I will level up as high as I can. So the game's easy. That's just a, that's a me thing. Mm -hmm. This game didn't get easy because I wasn't playing it right. So it never really got easy. <laughs> it was, I mean, like I almost every boss fight, I had to use save states and save load, save load because I just couldn't do it. I just wasn't strong enough to take out these bosses quickly, like not efficiently. I would take too much damage and they would take too much damage. And when I watched the speed and I realized, oh, I was doing this completely wrong because this guy's killing a boss in like five hits where it's taking me tons and tons of hits to take him out because I'm not doing it right. And it's not the that wasn't the game's fault. That was a me problem. Because I wasn't playing with the system that the game was giving me. So I can't, I can't, I don't insult the game for that. I just think I should have looked up more. And again, if I would have had a guide, I would have done that. I didn't have a guide. So, so I'm trying to think of some of the other areas there. I think it's just the bowling alley that's really just the, the strangest area in the pinball. I think the other, the other world doesn't have anything too as weird. Uh, yeah. I mean, just normal platforming stuff. Yeah. Like there was that one section where you had to follow the heads. Oh, to, yeah. To make your way. Or just like keep a... going through random doors until it works out. I didn't follow any heads, so I think I must have... Oh, I know what you're talking oh. about. Yes. Okay, I did. I did do that, yes. That was interesting. I mean, the areas are so varied. The bosses are very... You fight a cowboy boss at one point, like a centaur with a cowboy hat and guns. And Yes. You fight a giant flower lady that we were talking about a little bit earlier. Like, they're very varied bosses. You fight a... You fight, like, a giant hungry guy, too, that wants to eat you or something. <laughs> like, they definitely made a lot of creatures... And they, I really do appreciate that. Like, they really thought about it, and they took a lot of time to make sure that element of the game was as good as they could get it. It's also a short game. Mm -hmm. I beat this game because I didn't screw around with character creation, which doesn't, I know doesn't add up to your time. I beat this game in under four hours, the game said, which I, I know I played more than that because I remember, you know, I know it took me longer because I was safe saving things, but that's not, it's a, it's a nice short game. Yeah. Yeah, I Beat the game and then tooled around for a bit afterwards, and I was still under five hours on my save. Yeah, I mean, you can spend a lot more hours. You screw around the character creation easily if you're into that, but I wasn't, so it wasn't hard for me. <laughs> I wrote down some monster names that I liked. Um, we got Gentle Shrimp. <laughs> the Gentle Shrimp, those are awesome. They were little shrimp in tuxedos. <laughs> there was one monster that was just called Shinra. Yeah, that, that made me laugh when I saw that. I'm like, huh, hmm, okay. Also, I think Square Enix bought Taito around 2005, which is funny. Oh, okay. There was one called, where is it? I had it. Oh, man, where is it? Well, I'll, I'll say a couple, but while you're yeah. doing that, there was, there was Crusher Castle, which is a castle with a cannon that just shoots you. Yes. I mean, there were some, I mean, I didn't use him, but I did get his card because he was kicking my ass. I'm like, I want him. Size Bishop was good. God, they're just, it's so varied and it, I was never, I wasn't bored playing this game, which does happen during the show often. <laughs> Our games that bore me. This game did not bore me. As much as it irritated me and frustrated me because I was getting my ass handed to me at times because I was playing wrong, it was interesting that the enemy variety. Yes. It was always, you never know what you're going to fight, and it was just, it was just amusing. It was a nice short game, mm -hmm. which is also something I like. I'm trying to think of some of the other, like, one enemy is called a flower pot demon. Which is a flower pot with legs, like looks like something's popping out of it. Like just so many strange things that you fight, and for a lot of areas, you don't even have to fight anybody. You can just run by. There are certain areas you have to fight to unlock a door, but you mm -hmm. most of the game doesn't make you do that, so which is nice. Yeah, I it, like it, when it, games don't force me to do stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's a game design, I think, to just make sure you can have a fun time and also play it and not be like too vexed. There was one part that I did get stuck in that I had to use that. I was able to figure it out because I didn't have a choice. Um, you get into a room where there's three switches, of different elements, and I couldn't I didn't have the stuff. To, I couldn't get the switch to hit. even though I had one of the elements. And when I was messing around in the room, I kept seeing an enemy that I couldn't find. Well, they have these little faces, these little like little square, little face drawn on it. And you had to fight them. And then they had they had all the different abilities that they could, you know, electric, ice, water, fire. I'm like, and that's when I realized, OK, these are how I hit the switches. Like, that's what I did to hit the yeah. switches. That was that was cool to me because I usually don't problem solve in games. Usually I look up solutions. I like that, Eric, because then the it branches off into three hallways and one of them's like a kitchen where you're or, or like a stovetop where you're doing the fire element and then a fridge for the water or the uh -huh. ice <laughs> and then just a generic hallway for electricity. It, it's cool. Like, there was a giant milk. There were giant milk jugs, too, that you had to like jump by and stuff. It was mm -hmm. really interesting. I don't know. It's just. 
Yeah, it's very creative. Yeah, I was impressed. I was I was impressed with things like that. Like it it and it was fun. It I, I mean this is I was still fighting things, but I enjoyed the fact that I had to solve a puzzle for a change. Kind of. <laughs> yes, like I feel like it got you out of your comfort zone. I'm very it glad did. for that. It, that doesn't happen often with games because I usually don't have to. I only actually use three different characters in this game too. I I stuck with the the first guy. I stuck with the pawn knight that I got at one point, which is just a little purple guy that had two weapons in his hands. And I edited his attacks a little bit, and I used him. And then I also then used the raven thing at the end. And those are my those are my go to creatures. And by the way, somebody made a Metroid in this game too. Oh, okay, of course they did. <laughs> Samus, man, that's cool. I give people props that actually went through and made cool stuff in this game because I could not. I remember seeing back in the day, I think it was on Game FAQ's message board where someone made Cyclops and Wolverine. Oh, that's impressive considering your 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 tools are drawing shapes and then choosing from a shape that fits close to your shape and then coloring it. Mm-hmm. So in order to do that, you had to draw little shapes for each color. Like that's an, I give people props that went through that kind of time to do that. Yeah, like figuring how it. big that creation is and how much you can create, like it is overwhelming. But that's a big thing for people. I remember back in the days of playing SmackDown, where me and my friends would create different, like they would create different wrestlers. Like they would go online and find guys that would say, okay, this is how you make this wrestler. This is how you make this character. I remember doing that. I remember that being a big thing at the time. I mean, I'm sure it's still a big thing for people. I That was never a big thing for me, but I remember that. I only have one character creation I can ever think of that I was fond of, and that was Elaine in Dragon Age. And that wasn't much creation. <laughs> I made a blonde girl. That was my creation. That's, you know, do what you can. I wonder what, like, a, what a realistic human would look like in this game. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think you could make one. Well, like, kind of like the Mario to, like, regular person look in um, Mario Odyssey. Okay. Mm-hmm. I am watching a video Mario. where a guy made his avatar, which is like a purple-haired girl. And it, mm-hmm. with swords. So I, I want to talk about the final area before we wrap this up, the Devil Palace. That was, like, it's a lot shorter than the other ones, which and it only ha- it only it doesn't have, like, every other area has, a, you fight a boss midway through, and then you fight the final boss that gives you the key of that section. Right. And the Devil Palace didn't have that, which I'm not upset about. It just had the one, the one boss fight. <laughs> there was two. Okay, but they were all, they were together, though. Yeah. It wasn't like you fought a boss, you go through another area, you fight another boss. Also, we hadn't mentioned there's a stamina bar in this game, too. Mm-hmm. It's like which cameo. doesn't really like like cameo. Yes. I didn't even notice the game had a stamina bar, really, to be honest, because it never affected me. I only it, noticed late in the game that it was mm-hmm. like, oh, that's why I can't always attack so much. Got it. Yes. OK. Yeah, it, I didn't notice it. So I, I this game did what I don't like in finales of games at all. It, it pissed me off a little bit. <laughs> I do like the double palace. You do see before we get the final fight. I do want to say I like how you see the 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 throne room. You see the king and the queen's thrones right before as you go through to get to the final area. Mm -hmm. That was cool. Which is where then you find the devil. Yes. And the thing about the devil is he has two forms because you know he it's just the final boss of a game. I'm like okay, and he was he's a bitch. (laughs) Again, I use Pengel, and Pengel has a shooting attack and can fly high and low and you can really play with that elevation so i just kited from oh. so the first form is like a is a humanoid form that runs around and kicks you and punches you and shoot things at you and i yes. save states and now okay i'm like i beat him i was really impressed with it and then he has a second form because why not yeah it's ps2 era i don't miss this era of games i really don't and his second form, this one where he's like a dog, like he it really to me he looks like a behemoth from Final Fantasy because he's purple and he's on all fours. I can see that. And oh god, he I had to use save states every hit. You do you can get health in this fight because there are little enemies that spawn that can drop hearts for you, but at the same time you're you're busy fighting that it's hard to get the health, and I wasn't doing much damage because I was using the wrong monsters. And he kept throwing like okay, so was was I the only person that saw teacups when he throws these little orange salt? gold saucers at you they look like teacups to me for their dish pans it's like a, a running thing in japan oh okay okay that makes sense i guess it was <laughs> really it was odd i'm just like why why <laughs> yeah and then the game did a big fuck you to me to me you beat the boss I'm like i beat the game I'm like wait a second why why is pengol turning into a demon oh no so one of the one of the two children that you deal with throughout this game who killed his sister i think right yes i uh, kills his sister Turns into a demon and then kills the demon king, the, the devil that you just got done fighting. And I was like, oh, no. 
I had no health at this time, by the way. I was at a yep. sliver of health. I'm like, yeah. I was like, no, no, no. And all of a sudden you get put into another boss fight. I'm like, no, no game, no game. I'm like, where's my health? But, but lucky. if you game over there, you, you game over and continue, you start at the, the table of boss fights. Yes, you I was like up. very happy. Yeah, about you that. started the boss fight you got to, basically. Which was nice. I'm glad the game didn't do a do a really fuck you moment. I mean, once I figured that out, it's like, oh, okay, that's fine. I don't care. Then you can have as many forms as you want. No, he had the final boss had three. I think what three health bars? Yeah, three forms. Yeah, yeah, because you the first form he's in the demon where he's flying around. Then he turns and you fight him again where he takes more damage. And he's in like a three different forms he switches into. And then when you beat that, he go and I'm like, okay, I did it. Then he has a third form he turns into. A, he turns into a giant dragon. Mm-hmm. Yep. My issue with this is I didn't have the ability to fly, so I couldn't get the hearts that were teasing me on top of the towers. <laughs> so that's that an issue. Too. Yes, it is. Especially when you're fighting a three-form boss fight and you see hearts that you cannot get because you don't have an ability that you didn't know about because you didn't play this game right. Again, very glad to have Pengel. I wonder how you... I, I wish I... In a normal game, I would look up a guy and I would find out where he is and when I got him, but in a normal game... I, well... Just, there were certain points where you would just find cards in the world. Uh-huh. Like, I think that's how we got, like, the, the, the Taito symbol. Yep. The Taito logo somewhere. It was just, I found a card, and it was just kind of sitting there. And so now I can bleed the Taito logo. But I think I think there was, like, a moment where there was, like, a few cards kind of, like, on, like, a shelf or something. Huh. And you could just, Maybe like, had, walk over them. Maybe I had Tango, I just didn't know it. Yeah, that's why I said make sure you check, like, the super rare ones, because that you, you might have it. I didn't... I didn't do that this game. I We also, we didn't communicate <laughs> before we played this game very much, which is the old way I used to do this show a lot, where I wouldn't talk to people. Like, we would just, like, find out what happened when we all sit down together. So I was I had a few surprises in this game. Yeah, I, I like the fact that the game ends on a, on a dragon boss fight. Like, as a guy who loves dragon, that was cool, even though if he, kicked, he he did kick my ass. And I had to use a lot of saves. You know, he's not that hard. Like, he's he was an easy final boss fight, which is nice after everything you went through, because all you really have to do... Is his attacks are just giant halos that he hits the ground. They do very little damage. You've got to jump over them and then you just beat him. And he's not, he, but he's not available very long to hit. Mm-hmm. But it was nice. Like they could have made it a lot harder than they did. And I thought like, okay, you just beat this thing twice. Like we understand like here, have a, have an easier fight. That's how I felt. Any other things you guys, any f- f- thoughts about the final boss? I, I still felt it was difficult. Like even with my advantages, but I felt like it was more fair that way, at least because I only died once. But it was like kind of knuckle gripping of just like I have a sliver of health. What form is this? This is like the fifth form. It feels like, oh, my God. Yeah, it, I don't like when bosses have that many forms. But but it does the thing that every JRPG should do in this scenario and just like give you that save state where you could just go back to that form. Yes. And not have to fight Kuja and then fight Necron at the end of the game. We shouldn't be there. Yeah, I agree. Like you're going to have the option to turn that off if you want. But like, <laughs> yeah, generally just. Save after that. Just, just give it the auto save. I'm happy the game had that. Otherwise, I I don't know if I well I would have beat it of course, but I would have been angrier. <laughs> the one thing I was thought was a letdown overall in the game was the music. I can't comment. Which, yeah, which, it's it's pretty basic. But but it's Yasunori Matsuda, which is, who is one of the greatest video game composers of all time. This is the Chrono Trigger guy. This is the the Chrono Cross guy. The Xeno Gears guy. Oh, Noble Yasu. No, uh, yes, Nori Matsuda. Oimatsu only did a little bit of Chrono Trigger. I did not know that. Yeah, he did not do Chrono Cross or Xeno Gears. Chrono Trigger is better. But yeah, Chrono Cross. Okay, Chrono Cross does have some amazing music. Time Scar. Mm. Yes. But like, I have listened to offcuts of Matsuda's music. I've listened to like his lesser known stuff. And that mo- even that stuff is better than this soundtrack. Like, this is the man who created Mario Party. I think he created the Honeycomb Havoc music even. <laughs> Yeah, because I'm the, listening like, to Time Scar right now, and God, that song is great. He's a fantastic composer. I just don't know what happened here. I feel like maybe he's someone that needs to be directed well on how to create the music and like what it's for. Because if you just go like, hey, just make some generic fantasy themes, like this just sounds like what you would get. And because even Xenogears music is like it fits really good in that game. I love that soundtrack. It's so I good. Love that game. Oh. That's another episode today. You, have you have you the Radical Dreamer soundtrack is really good. The Super Nintendo game? Yeah. <laughs> I played it, yes. Because it is just the Chrono Cross soundtrack, but in the Chrono Trigger uh, sound font. It's very good. It's going to be on the show someday as a mini. It just has like listening, listening to kids theme and Super Nintendo version is very cool. 
But uh, anyway, that's 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 another game. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was disappointed by Mitsuda's uh, efforts here, as because that was like the main reason I signed on to play this game. I'm glad you did because there weren't a lot of people running at the door to play this game for with me. So I'm thank you. you did. <laughs> of course, I had a lot of fun. It was it was more interesting than I gave it credit for, and I thought it'd be a fun challenge for me to like you know, step out of like outside of a game I was comfortable with or like. Like it was even at my on my radar to play like cameo was. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to talk about the ending of this game that I didn't really pay attention to, but I had playing. <laughs> I mean, not not that I did. I enjoyed this game. I just didn't care about the story. It just was too. I don't know. I wasn't in the mood. But like in the end, so you you beat the devil, you seal him up, or no, you kill you kill Pallet or whatever the hell their name Tablet. Tablet. And then you re- then you put Tablet's ghost back into the body that you draw of Tablet after you just beat Tablet, giving, yes. which is to me stupid, but okay. And then you see all the all the ones that you beat, and the the dog, what's the dog's name again? Uh, Pastel. Pastel. Pastel see, ends up sealing the devil back, and then like what you rescue her from going inside or something? Because she's like, she, I think she's like the incarnate of the seal or whatever, so she has to be part of it. Oh, okay. And so without her, it's not a very strong seal. And so it breaks again. And basically Pixel's like, you know what? Like, fuck it. We're just going to we're just going to do this forever if we have to. OK, I like I like having friends and tablets, my friend friend in quotes. It's more than that. I promise. <laughs> so, OK, so that's why tablet is in the in the town. In that final little cutscene. Yes. Where it looks like an anime. Yes. Yeah, I'd watch that. Yeah. Where I, I like I because it, it's a very kind of stereotypical ending where like status quo has like come back and everyone's fine and they all go on their adventures and they live happily ever after. But I just like that it was very much pixel being like, hey, this whole plot that we had to like save the kingdom and like restore it and get rid of the devil. We're not going to do that. We just put all this way. But you know what? No, I, I like this this way. We're going to keep it. If they're evil, I'll fight them. But other than that. It's cool. It's definitely definitely interesting and very very different than anything we played before. This is even this well no Cube of War was pretty damn strange, but this was better than Cube of War. This actually was fun. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Cube of War wasn't fun, especially when I had to uh, start over and not beat the game because the game cheated me. <laughs> the game didn't tell me. All right, um, I think we should go to listener questions, memories, and comments. All right. I'm sure this is a lengthy segment. Oh, God, yes. I have, I posted in, let's see here. I posted in three different groups. I posted in one group for one particular person. So first from the I Watched the Entire Overblood Super Replay from Sergio Silva Jr. Stopped inventing games for your show, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from Kevin Slacky. I played the predecessor, Magic Pengle. Same engine, but it was a turn-based RPG that I want to play now. I, I really do at some point. We'll see. Yeah, maybe. And then from Giant Bomb, from I got two to read here, and that's all we have. <laughs> from Cameron Litlin, I rented this and remember having a lot of fun with it. Probably early game fly. And from friend of the show, Tony Karras. The whole reason I posted in this group because I knew he liked this game. God, I love this game. So weird and creative. My buddy and I used to make our best attempts at Pokemon, usually with horrifying results. Excellent. <laughs> friend of the show, also a podcaster. Hey, I like that game. So check him out. Good show. All right, and then that brings us to our last segment, sh- shelf stack or box. And I'll go first. I so at first I was a little t- torn about this game. I was like, I wasn't really having the most fun with it. I, you know, it took a little bit to grow on me. But as the game went on, I really I enjoyed it. So I'm gonna put it in the stack. It's it's something that hey, I even recommended this game to somebody else at work who likes PS2 in that era, who likes games. I'm like, hey, you should look for this and try it out. I didn't realize it's a seventy dollar game when I was trying to sell it to something. But it's a fun game. It's is it worth seventy? No, not at all. And this game also probably this game never got re released either, and it probably nope. won't be. I'm nope. assuming because I just can't see that happening. So, in the words of SNES Drunk, play it any way you can. <laughs> I'm putting on the stack, and I'm I'm glad I did get the chance to finally play this, and I kind of want to play the prequel, the, the prequel now. So, so, what's the purpose of the stack again? It's in the middle. It's something okay. you don't want to put in the box. Something that you like, but you just don't like as much. You want to shelve it. Okay. So that's where it's going. How about you, Dominic? Definitely in the stack. I will keep it in my collection probably, but it's not going to go on like the shelf of honor. It's not going to be up there with like the Metroids or Mega Man Legends or anything, but I will keep it around. And how about you, Mike? 
It's going on the shelf. It's up there with Ape Escape <laughs> Three as my my favorite PS2 games. Like like we said, it's just it's so charming and the the graphics hold up so well. And as we've discussed, there's obviously multiple ways you can play this if you really want to give yourself a challenge. So it's got decent uh-huh. replayability to it too. Fun. I would like not necessarily an HD remaster or like, but like just an HD remake in the sense that it removes the homophobia and just yeah. like embraces modernity. <laughs> It's too bad that this game has not been re-released. Also, a better dub would be nice. It really should be re-released. Like this is this is also one thing that I brought up before in an earlier episode, where I'm very for emulation, especially for stuff like this, where it came out once, yeah, a- at some point, and it never gets re-released. It doesn't like these are the games that when you when people emulate, like this makes sense because you can't really like you can't get it, and having to spend seventy dollars on YouTube that or not YouTube on eBay, that's for you know, that's for collectors, and I'm glad that, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but for the just an average person to try in a game and experience something that people put hours into, it, it yeah. sucks that there's no way to get to it. Totally, and if you want to emulate it, that's fine with me. Like, that's not the way I like playing it, but if that's how you want to do it, that's totally fine. If this game would have been $20 and I would have had the PS2 that I got, I would have bought this game to play it easily. But the fact that I couldn't, you know, it was like, okay, I, I'm not paying 70 <laughs> I mean, you could buy that, you could buy Returnal. Yeah, I don't want to play that, though. Even though I know a guy who worked on that game, I do not want to play Returnal because it looks great, but I've heard things about it, and I'm like, man, that ain't going to go well for me. <laughs> I don't like roguelikes. I've never been a big fan of them either, but, you know, 70 bucks. But Returnal does look cool. And I don't have a PS5, so that could be an issue, too. Oh, yeah, that, that'll be in a couple of years. We'll all get PS5s eventually. Well, hey, just like in Avengers Endgame, that's why they were still, that's why Thor was still playing a PS4. He couldn't get a PS5 in 2025 still. Yep. You know, the blip just the snap just took care of that. There was just nobody making it. Just weren't PS fives. Okay, that's my dumb joke. But <laughs> and I do want to bring up a sad thing. So, Mike, this is gonna be your last episode for a little bit. Yep. Or for a while. Yep. Unfortunately, yeah, because you got to take a break from the show because life. Yeah, life. Life will do that. Yeah. So you won't hear from him for you. You'll still hear his voice a few more times because I have recordings that are in the can that are still gonna be coming out after this that he's on and we will still be doing a few more we have a few things and you'll be hopefully guesting later on too eventually when things get calmer yeah just who knows someday talk because you're my Mega man guy too so i gotta get you back for those and i do those later because mm-hmm. <laughs> Mega man legends 2 is coming at some point i have had multiple people tell me how much they like our Mega man legends episode and the fact that we covered that so i'm like yeah we gotta do two at some point <laughs> i got it and plus i want to play it mm-hmm. and i can get ready to play three someday right <laughs> <laughs> So I'll go back to 2011 and just pretend. Uh, man, I will never. Why? Why didn't we get a third game? They ma- they were making it anyway. Uh-huh. Because it's Capcom. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I want to introduce what we're talking about next week. So next week we are going to be covering a game that I have wanted to replay for years. Metal Gear Solid, the twin snakes for a GameCube made by the infamous, famous Silicon Knights. Yeah. We seem to have a love affair for that studio this show because we have covered almost all their games at this point. Even Too Human? Not yet. That's the only one we're missing after Snake. We did. We haven't covered their early stuff, but we covered Blood Omen before Mike joined. We did Eternal Darkness. Yes, Eternal Darkness, and then we did X Men Destiny. Destiny with the one okay. person who loves that game. I found the one I, person. I also one. I think X Men Destiny is a fun podcast game. Yeah, it's an episode. Go check it out <laughs> if you haven't listened to it. Mike loves that game. Yep. Two humans, not, though. Good luck. Not play the DS version. Not. It's garbage. I still haven't beaten it, and it's on my phone. I just can't force myself to finish it because it's garbage. And I forgot it existed. And I also want to say we do have our SNES anniversary episode for 30th anniversary. 30th anniversary did come out a little bit ago but when you're listening to this. So if you haven't listened to it, go check that out. I'm sure you love SNES. So go listen to it. And then to wrap up this episode, I do want to say, please, as I said before, please follow us on Patreon for as little as a dollar. You can vote in our and our poll. We have a poll every month. Right now it's an anime pilot test. Plus, if you donate $10, I will plug your show four episodes a month in the beginning, in the opening, and the ending. You will get plugs so we can help you out. So for $10, you can help us out and we'll help you out. And please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and on YouTube. We are on YouTube. No video, but we're on YouTube. There's audio. You can you can, you can can listen to us if you'd rather listen to us there, which people do. I don't know why, but people do. So I, I, you've, you've joined Descendant Waves and just posting on YouTube without even putting an audio thing out there. I love it. <laughs> someday i'm gonna do video but that hasn't yeah. that's a that's a that's a whole nother trek that i'm not ready for yet yeah but someday someday that will i will actually record these with video and you can see our faces 
but that's 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 when we almost go live so i'm not there yet yeah and then i also want to give a shout out to our buddy bill tucker who does the mcu with with us he has his own podcast that started uh, a gamer looks for you so definitely go check him out you will see a link in the show notes and want to give an awesome shout out to our awesome intro and outro, courtesy of Bobby, aka Mike Stoney from his EP Bite the Book, Song to Cool Kid Squad. You will see a link in the show notes to his YouTube channel. Definitely check him out too. And Dominic, where can people find you? I'm on Twitter. You can find me at D A C I C H O C K I. That's D A C H O K I. That's my initials, last name, blah, blah, blah. I'm also on YouTube, the Dissident Waves podcast, it's a fun music podcast with me and a couple friends. Uh, we don't have a lot of listeners, but we still have fun with it. Uh, as as of today, we were posting the second anniversary of our show, so okay. that'll be a lot of fun. And you will see a link in the show notes to his to his YouTube channel or whatever he gives me. Yeah, the <laughs> sure channel, whatever. What are you going to give me? Whatever you send me will be in the show notes. And I think that's everything I need to say. So we will see you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.